Hallelujah. Put those hands together. Give God praise and glory. Amen, amen. Bless the name of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Uh, we want to um, take care of a couple of things. First of all, thank you all for being here on this morning. It's a good morning because we're here with good people this morning. So good to see your smiling faces. Y'all look good. Y'all smell good. <laughs> it's a great day, and it's going to be a beautiful week. I want to say thank you to all of those of you who supported the Women's Fellowship on yesterday. We had a great time, and uh, as Pastor Hobson articulated, um, the pastries that were brought to the house trying to get down to 185 pounds and uh, those those chocolate chip cookies that were soft they were not salty or too sugary they were just right and then there were some cupcakes in my mind I pictured the traditional cupcake but uh, Andrea Simonton had cakes in cups and I had the lemon. The, why'd you have to put two in there? <laughs> Does it come with two or is it just one? It comes with two? Okay, and that's fine. I mean, they were just right. And it was a great concept. Enjoyed them very, very much. Um, and God bless your business. Amen. Um, very, very good. God has gifted you in that area. Uh, and those of you who came out to help um, us bless the children in our community with the uh, candy and the love that we were able to show, thank you for that as well. We have a brand new sign out front. It's really nice. So we're thanking God for that. God is just doing some great things. Um, we have a baby we want to dedicate. And it's always appropriate to dedicate our children to the Lord. So we thank God for the family and friends who have come to dedicate this beautiful baby. And uh, we're going to ask you all to come forward. I need the anointing oil, please. grandparents, all those who, in fact, um, the family that came, if you all come, will come to support, they say it takes a village. All of us are part and parcel to ensuring the success of this generation, this generation that is coming up in challenging times. The Bible says that they brought the little children to Jesus and there were those who tried to stop them from bringing the children to Jesus and Jesus said suffer the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven and that word suffer in the King James Version means allow the children to come and so I want to anoint this beautiful baby and I'm going to ask them to Read the uh, certificate, please. The certificate of dedication to the Lord is presented to Navaya Lashawn Logan. We dedicate this child to the Lord in fervent prayer church. November 1st, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Mark 10 and 1. The Bible says that Jesus took the baby into his arms. Let's see if we can get that done. Father, we thank you for this beautiful child. We thank you for the family. We dedicate her to you. We ask, Father God, that all of her gifts, all of her talents, all of the energy that you've put on the inside of her will be a blessing to this generation to this family, help her and protect her.
keep her from all hurt, harm, and danger. Give her strength, Father God. Pray right now in the name of Jesus that there will be nothing that will stop her from fulfilling her purpose, the purpose that you gave her even before the beginning of time. And we thank you for it. Bless her now in Jesus' name. Amen. Good baby. <laughs> She's been dedicated to the Lord. Now, those of you who are godparents and those of you right here, all right, uh, we charge you with helping to raise this child on today. And uh, your lives will impact her life directly and indirectly. You accept that charge before these witnesses today. And those of you who are family and friends, as this child grows up in your presence, uh, more is caught than taught. And we charge you all with being a good example to this child. Do you accept that charge? We pray for this mom. Father, we thank you for this mother. We pray for her strength. We pray, Father God, that you would help her. Help her to raise this child. Help her, Lord God. Give her more patience in every way. We pray, Father God, that she will never be without a job that she will never be without everything that she needs to take care of herself and to take care of this baby. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for coming. On the first Sundays, um, we take communion. Let's give God praise for this family. If you have not received a communion sacrament so far, please be sure to raise your hand if you'd like to participate. Uh, we don't embarrass anybody or put any pressure on anyone to participate in communion because it's so important that you do it because you want to, that you want to participate. Communion is a special time. It is a time where we discern the Lord's body until he comes. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So as often as we take communion, we are remembering our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are remembering Jesus when we take communion. You can be healed at this moment. You can be delivered. The scripture says that many have taken communion unworthily and as a result, some have gotten sick and died because they did not properly discern the Lord's body. I want to help you prepare yourself for communion. We'll prepare ourselves together. If you'll pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of all my sins. I believe you sent Jesus to die for me. Jesus thank you for dying for my sins father i thank you for raising jesus from the dead i thank you for saving me cleanse me purge me and make me whole in jesus name amen if you will hold in your hand the communion sacrament i'm going to ask you to stand for this part of the worship service. Standing is a position that shows honor. We're honoring our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that Jesus died for you? He didn't have to do it, but he did. He did it because he loves us. And he still loves us. He loves you more than you know. Sometimes you might say, I don't understand how I can go through all the things I go through and, and, and believe that Jesus loves me. But he does. He really does. The Bible says in the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread as we do now. And he broke it and he blessed it. Father, we thank you for this communion sacrament that represents the body of Jesus that was broken 
Your word says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. In the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 53, with his stripes we are healed. Spiritually, physically, and in every other way. Now, Father, we thank you that as we receive this communion, as we discern the body of Jesus, we will be healed inside and out. We stand in proxy for our city, our state, and our nation, that our nation will be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. You may eat. This beverage represents the blood of Jesus that was shed for the sins of the world. The scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. And that life is in the blood. It was the blood of Jesus that ran down. The blood of Jesus that helped to save our souls. So Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. This beverage symbolizes that sacrifice. We thank you that there is no longer any need to sacrifice animals or anything like that. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may drink. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. The ushers will collect the waste material. Always remember Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Keep him on your mind. Your mind. Always keep him on your mind can you just lift one hand as we say that always remember Jesus Jesus always keep him on your mind that's it he deserves a wave offering Always remember Jesus, Jesus, always keep him on your mind, your mind, always keep him on your mind. Your mind always keep him on your mind. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. Always keep him. On your mind, your mind, always keep him. Somebody going through something, always keep him. Feel God in the building, always keep him. Keep 
keep him COVID-19 always keep him no matter what happens always keep him you may be up or down always keep him on your mind your mind I'll always keep him on my mind my mind I'll always keep him on my mind somebody put those hands together give God praise and glory he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be glorified he's worthy to be he's worthy to be magnified somebody said what a mighty God we serve the angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty God we serve amen turn with me to second Chronicles chapter 8 hallelujah anybody here named Tabitha or you're closely connected to someone named Tabitha just raise your hand real quick if you are glory to God how are you connected huh cousin can you stand for Tabitha the Holy Spirit while we were in praise and worship instructed me to pray for Tabitha and we're going to do that. And we're going to pray for her. You all share the same DNA. Incidentally, 30 minutes before our services on Sunday, we are kneeling prayer now. God put it in my spirit to go back to kneeling in prayer. I do it from time to time, but we don't do it enough. And so 30 minutes before our service start, you can join us in kneeling prayer. But I want to pray for Tabitha, glory to God. Anybody here named Matthew? Are you closely connected to a Matthew? How are you connected? Stand for him, please. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know God is real? Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Jesus is real, I know the Lord, he's real to me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Tabitha. Lift your hands high for her. And we bind every attack against her life. Father, I ask that you would surround her this week with your amazing grace. Don't let anything happen to her. In the name of Jesus, keep her in the center of your will and let your blessings be upon her this week, starting today in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for Matthew. We pray for him. We pray for him. And today, I want you to call him and tell him or text him that God is with him. Will you do that for me? A word from the Lord for him that God is with him. And it's so important for us to know just that, that God is with us. And so, God, I pray for Matthew that he would receive great deliverance in his spirit when Maple tells him that you are with him, that every yoke in his emotions would be destroyed in the name of Jesus and that he would be free in Jesus' name. Jesus is real, I know the Lord is real to me, oh Lord, Jesus is real, I know the Lord is real to me, 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 me. Anybody here named Andrew? 
Andrew or connected? Raise your hand if you're connected. How are you connected to Andrew? Your brother? Glory to God, I'm going to run in here, y'all. Can you stand for Andrew? And you don't have to stand, my brother right here. I like that medallion you got on. <laughs> you have kingdom in you. You are a leader. You are a leader. And you have leadership qualities. And I'm praying that God would develop those leadership abilities in you. I don't know you. But you have leadership ability. I want to encourage you to read everything you can on leadership. Do you have um, iPhone or the other one? Huh? The other one? iPhone. All right, so we kingdom brothers then. <laughs> so go to iBooks and, and get everything you can on leadership. And it may not make sense to you now, but you are a leader. And those leadership skills are going to be cultivated. And God is going to place you in a job where you can take all of your experiences, everything that you are, everything that you have become. See, y'all, we have to understand all of our strengths and weaknesses. God knew we had them when we were born. You didn't acquire these weaknesses. Many of them, if not all of them, you were born with. See, it's the Holy Spirit that helps us stay on track. I want you to be okay with who you are. And stop listening to all the voices that you to this, not enough that. People have you going crazy. Hallelujah. And so I'm praying for you that the leader that you are, you will become. Anything we can do to help with that, I want to know about it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brother. Protect him and keep him. Watch over him and lead him and guide him. And as he reads material on leadership, let it resonate in his spirit. Use him, Lord God. I pray all his prayers be answered. His dreams come true. He can be the man that you call for him to be and made him to be in Jesus' name. A kingdom man. Amen. We pray for Andrew. God, we thank you for his healing. We thank you for his deliverance. And we give you praise and glory even today. And when this woman, your daughter, my sister, talks to him, that something will change on the inside of him and that he would have a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody here named Marcus? Are you connected? closely to a Marcus. How are you connected? Can you stand for Marcus real quick? We're going to get to the word, y'all. <laughs> and if you're wondering, how long is this going to take? Just look at the clock on the back wall and that'll help refresh your spirit. Because <laughs> y'all know I'm timely. Hallelujah. We pray for Marcus, God. Satan, the Lord rebukes you in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebukes you in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you in Jesus' name that Marcus is totally and completely healed spiritually, emotionally in Jesus' name. Give God praise for Marcus. And those of you who are watching, those of you who are watching, thanks for joining us. Please share this video right now. Somebody need it. You'll be functioning as a social ministry evangelist. There are algorithms on Facebook and other social media outlets that when you click like, when you interact, it lets other people know that we're on. We need your help. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. There in 2 Corinthians, chapter number 8, verses 1 through 8. If you have it, say amen. I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. It came to pass at the end of 20 years, 
That's 2 Chronicles. I said 2 Corinthians. Let me get over there. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Beginning verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints, and not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord, and then to us by the will of God. So we urge Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. Let me read that verse 6 again. So we urged Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace. Somebody say the grace of giving. With Victor in your voice, the grace of giving in you as well. But as you abound in everything, that word abound means to increase and grow. As you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. Somebody say the grace of giving. So I'm introducing this uh, to you on today <laughs> but I'm not going to preach this today I was but I'm going to thank you I'm going to share with you what God gave me in a dream overnight so I'm, I'm, I'm in a conflict if you will because I prepared all of this but then God gave me something in a dream to share with you and in that dream, here's the question that God gave me, or the statement. The answer to your problems is in the questions you ask. So whenever I wake up and that is on me as strong as it was this morning, I reached over and I got my iPhone and I went to my notes and, and right when I woke up, I wrote that question or that statement down. The answer to your problems is in the questions you ask. The answer to my problems is in the questions that I ask myself and I ask others around me. Now, when I ask myself the question, that's introspection, dealing with me. Because most of my problems are not from the outside in. If we be honest, most of our problems emanate from the inside. I was doing Kangoo Fitness the other day. It's an exercise on special boots and stuff like that. And the instructor had on an outfit and it said, you versus you. And now it's kind of cliche and become a pithy saying, uh, where fitness is concerned, you versus you. If you're going to reach your goals, it's you versus you. If you're going to be, Sister Vaughn, what you're going to be, it's you versus you. <laughs> and so when I thought about this, I said, well, if I want to solve the problem, if I want to get to where God wants me to be, I got some questions that need to be asked. When you read the Gospels of Jesus Christ, you'll find quite often Jesus would ask people questions. Like, who do men say that I am? Then he'd wait for the answer. <laughs> Y'all better come and get me. I feel like running through troops and leaping over walls. Or he would ask Peter a question, will you also leave me? Or do you love me? He would ask questions uh, he asked a woman at the well, where's your husband? <laughs> the scribes and the Pharisees, the Essenes, and all of these different religious sects would ask him questions and then he would ask them questions 
in answer to a question. Questions are powerful because when I ask you a question and you give me an answer, it helps me to understand what you're really about. But let's start with you. Because the prophet, prophet Isaiah said, Oh, wretched man that I am. He said, I'm the first one that needs the help. Let me get straightened out. Then I can help get you straightened out. Because there's too many people trying to get you straightened out who themselves, they messed up. And mess up can't help mess up. I'm just preaching prophetically this morning. Mess up can't help mess up. You, you, you got to get yourself straight and get out of the fight you in with you before you can help me with my fight. And that is why many of us are experiencing so much drama. Everybody got drama. But it's the question... The answer to your problem is in the questions that you ask. Write this down for this week. What am I going to do this week that will change and improve my relationships? Because often we want people to do something for us. And by the way, if you need a scripture for this, the, the Bible says work out your own soul salvation. Is that what it said? Did the scripture not say examine yourself? You can Google where they are. <laughs> they, in the, they in the Bible though. To examine yourself, to work out your own soul salvation. What am I going to do? Ask yourself that question this week that will change and improve my relationships because relationships are important to God. And a lot of times we think the other person in the relationship is the problem and sometimes they are. But you always want to make sure that you're not contributing to the problems that are causing the relationship not to work. Another question is, what am I going to do this week that will change and improve my finances? And some people have a disease called Funzalo. Anybody had that? Funzalo? Well, to alleviate that problem, you have to ask yourself the question, what am I going to do that will improve my finances? That's an important question because that means I have to do something. And I'm not expecting something for nothing. You are capable of doing 50% more than you are currently doing. Your screen time, at least on iPhone, I don't know about the other one, but your screen time on iPhone will tell you how much time you're spending on the screen. And some of us, if we will be honest, we have spent since the beginning of the year enough time on the screen to have earned two degrees online. I was in a community, community meeting the other day with some other leaders and they were talking about all these companies who are saying, you don't have to have a college degree. You don't have to have this. We just want somebody who will come and work because everybody want a job, but everybody don't want to. I had this taste for a Whopper yesterday. Y'all laughing. I don't look like I eat a whole lot of them. <laughs> I like Whoppers. They're good for you. They're flame broiled. Not fried, broiled, right? And so I just wanted, I had been wanting one. So yesterday, um, since they had the women's fellowship and all that, and we usually go out on Saturdays to a restaurant and all that. So I went into the, the line and uh, ordered me, oh, that's it. Just give me a Whopper. That's it. No combo, no fries, nothing. Just the Whopper. That's, that's broiled beef, lettuce, tomato, onion. That's a burger with a salad on it, as my grandson put it. <laughs> I 
I tried to get him one. He said it got a salad on it. And he didn't want it. And the young lady at, 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 at the drive through how many of y'all know something about drive through drama? She was helping another lady behind us, and I guess they had some issues. And so when, when, when I opened the window to, to, to give my card and everything, and my grandson was in the back seat, and she said, uh, she hollered something about what she was saying to the other lady. Scared my grandson. And so after I got my, my sandwich and everything and we left, he asked me, well, why did she do that? I had the same question. Because we get on these jobs and we act like we at home. No, baby, you at work. And you are an extension. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. You are an extension. I'm trying to help. I, I'm trying to help because we missing it. We ain't winning, y'all. You, you're not at home, so you don't wear your bonnet to work. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. You were laughing at that. You didn't see that coming. No, you don't wear No, you get... You, you are an extension of the hand of the people who are writing you a check. And if they're not successful, guess what? So when I work for you, I want you to be successful. I'm going to exceed your expectations. And I told my children a long time ago, I got four beautiful daughters that look like models. I told them if you are the best one on the job, you'll never be broke. And it's hard to fire somebody who's producing. Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I really can't preach on the grace of giving if you're not employed. You can't, you can't talk to giving, talk about giving if somebody ain't got no money. And the Holy Spirit's, Holy Spirit's smart. You ain't at home, you at work. And there are things that you might do somewhere else, but when you're on the job. See, there's the cash language and there's the culture language. What's up, Doc? What's up, homeboy? Yeah, you know. What's going on, man? You my dog, you know. I don't do it very well, but y'all know where I'm going with it. See, see you, can, you can do MFs, F this, S this, all that. Come on, come on. All, all, the profanity, the expletives and all of that, that's the culture language. But when you at work, there's a cash language. And I know you know the cash language because I, I've listened to you answer a phone call when a bill collector call you or it's an important call. Hello? This is Gina. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'll be sending that in this week. You can expect it on time. I know y'all can shift. See, you, see you, you ever listen to that? Folk be shifting. But I got to get me straightened out to improve my finances. Because your finances will never improve if you keep getting fired. Your finances will not improve if you keep changing jobs. People ask me, how you get an 856 credit score? Because they say preachers are broke, not this one. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? And I thank God for that. I know how to work. If the church fire me tomorrow, I still be at the head of the pack. I know how to make money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't have to preach to make money. I know how to work. I got a good work ethic from my father and my uncle and them. I got to ask myself some questions. You get fired. Don't get mad at them. Don't cuss them out. Get mad at you and cuss yourself out first. I'm not condoning cussing, but since you're doing it. And then ask God to forgive you. Good. 
Because y'all know the saints. You get the, man, you get the saints. <laughs> Ask God to forgive you. And then have a conversation with yourself. I'm preaching. I said, God, we ain't going to have no unemployed people in Fervent Prayer Church. <laughs> what do he do when he's not in the pulpit? A lot of people couldn't keep up with me. I started at 4.50 a.m. in the morning. And then I'm rolling. I'm a lark. Some of y'all night owls. And it's okay. You have to figure out your rhythm. Are you a lark, early a.m., or are you a night owl, p.m. person? Right around about 10 o'clock, man, I can't hardly do anything. My head start bobbing. <laughs> I'm done. I, I, I'm gone. So I got to ask myself some questions. Here it is. And God gave me this, y'all. He is so good. What, what, what am I going to do this week? Did y'all get those? Number one, what am I going to do this week that will change and improve my relationships? Number two, what am I going to do this week that will change and improve my finances? And number three, what am I going to do this week that will change and improve my health? How's your health? See, if you look at yourself in the mirror, you'll be discouraged. You probably need to get rid of your mirror for a while. If that's how you roll. Because see, this stuff doesn't happen overnight. Although there are some places you can travel to who could give it to you overnight. I didn't know anything about it. I was talking to one of our staff people and they said, uh, I think I might go get snatched. I said, well, who gonna take you? <laughs> they confused. I said, who gonna take you? What's going on? Do we need to get the brother in together? You're going to get snatched. What's going on? What's going on? But that means you can go get your body done up. You, you, go, in, you go in looking like a, a gallon of Kool-Aid and come out looking like a 7-Up bottle. That's how you get snatched. That's new. <laughs> that blow you away. And another name for it was called the baby package. The mom, no, I messed it up. The mommy package. Now, I had never heard of some of this stuff. I have no problem with it because if you get braces, if you get your teeth, it's all cosmetic. If you can afford it, snatch. Do whatever you got to do. What are you going to do about your health? You know the key to good health? The key to good health is making sure that you're not putting more calories in than what you're burning up. And that you walk. Just go walk somewhere. Do something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I mean, take care of yourself. Don't let the doctor get serious about your health before you do. Don't let the doctor say, I wish you had came to see me sooner. Pain in the body is an indication that something ain't right. Especially to the brothers here. The brothers there and the brothers here. You got to see, brothers will walk around with a pain for two years. Not me, because I understand that pain in the body means something wrong, and that's, that's the mechanism that God put in there. So I trust God first, and then I want to go see somebody who knows something about what's going on to help me out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Did you get the questions? Did you get the questions? The answer to your problems is in the questions that you ask. 
What am I going to do this week that will change and improve my relationships? What am I going to do this week that will change and improve my finances? What am I going to do this week that will help change my health? Now, I, I participate in what they call kangoo bouncing, which is an aerobic exercise. Some of my kangoo bounce sisters are here. I met some wonderful people um, in doing that, and I do that maybe twice a week. Then I'm into bike riding, burning up 1,200 calories every time I get on the bike. I'm really enjoying that. And then I go to the Y or LA Fitness, or I got some workout stuff at home. And so ever, ever since I was 15, I, I just build that into my life. Because the Bible says in Galatians 5, no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but he nourished it and cherished it, it. The ETH on nourish and cherish is said to be an ad infinitum, which means it never stops. And so nobody who loves themselves should not take care of themselves, that you would nourish and cherish yourself, that you would nourish yourself, you eat fruits and vegetables, we all got something to work on, and uh, that you would cherish yourself, that you would love you some you, because if you don't love me, if you don't love you, you can't love me. God says in the first commandment, Love him. He says, love, love God. And then love yourself. And then love everybody else around you. Let's wrap this up. The next question. Why am I afraid? Why am I afraid? And then I just got another one here. Why am I still in this relationship? I didn't put that in my notes, but somebody, <laughs> that's whoever it's for. I really wanted to preach this and hoop it and, and do it. Man, I wanted to go. But I just got to teach this because we're in trouble. You ask yourself the question, why am I still in this relationship? And be honest about it. Why am I afraid? And then what am I afraid of? Another one is, why am I procrastinating? Why am I procrastinating? Why am I putting this off? Which probably goes back to fear. And then here's another one. Why did I say that like I did? The scripture says we are snared by the words of our mouths. The scripture says the power of life and death is in our tongues. So then what you say can determine what happens in your life, good or bad. When you say something, you're making a decision. When you make a decision, you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Decisions bring poverty. Decisions bring success. Decisions, did you hear that? Decisions bring either poverty or success. I'm going to go preach in the back, right back there. Glory to God. <laughs> I said, come on back. Did you hear that? Hashtag that. See, stop blaming other people for your lack of success. That's an indication of a poor self-image. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? Now, there are some things that people, barriers, they'll put in your way. But I don't care what somebody put in your way. I don't care what they do. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. Did you get that? And then finally, why did I react like that? Why did I react like that? If you're married, your wife says something to you. Or if you got a boo. <laughs> a kind answer turns away wrath. And the reason why a lot of folks still fighting because they like fighting. Brothers, you might get a rah-rah woman. <laughs> Sisters, you might get a roughneck. 
but I'm praying that God get the rah-rah out of them and the roughneck out of them before you hook up with them. Because by the time uh, you get married or whatever you're going to do, you don't need any more rah-rah and you don't need any more rough. How many of y'all done had enough of that? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what God gave me this morning. To ask myself some questions. And I ask these questions of myself all the time because I want to know. Introspection is powerful. Getting inside yourself and learning who you are and what you're about. Why did I say that? Why did I react like that? Why did I do that? And say, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better at it. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I thinking like this? Here's the thing, y'all, and we're going to go. Here's the thing. See, God can put you with somebody that's valuable. God can't put you and connect you. I'm not just talking about uh, a marriage or anything like that, but everything is about relationships. And God doesn't want you to be the scorner coming into the relationship. He doesn't want you to be the leaven coming into the relationship because a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. It makes the whole thing bad. And so what God wants to do is prepare you and get you ready. And yesterday they had this uh, Esther and Eve or even Esther um, uh, 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 Women's Fellowship thing going on. And it was all about getting yourself ready. But not just to get yourself ready for somebody, but to get yourself ready for you. So you can take your own self out to a restaurant and enjoy yourself. So you can enjoy being around you. So you can enjoy being on vacation with you. So you can enjoy just being around you. Because guess what? If you enjoy being around you, everybody else is going to enjoy being around you. Glory to God. So the Bible puts it like this. Mary was pregnant with Jesus. And Elizabeth, her cousin, was pregnant with John. And, and Elizabeth goes over Mary's house. And when Mary opens the door, the Bible says that John leaped in the womb <laughs> because he had a connection with Jesus. And he was excited to be in the presence of Jesus before Jesus was ever born. And so there are certain people that God is going to connect you with. And there are people that God's going to bring in and around your life. And some of y'all to be shouting and giving God glory right now. Because I hear God say, I'm going to send you some people that when they come around your life, it's going to cause you to leap on the inside. And everything about you and everything around you going to change because of the people that I'm bringing closer to your life. But get this, not only is God going to bring people into your life that will help you to have a better life, but I hear God saying, I'm about to take some people out of your life. Because the Bible says, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. So you can run this race that I have put before you like I predestined you to run it. And I wonder if I could get about 35 people in here with a mask on your face to stand up and give God a praise. And say, God, I thank you for what you're about to do in my life. But there are those of you who are not waiting on God to give you somebody. There are those of you who are not waiting on God to send somebody. He already sent somebody and you're reaping the benefits. And you ought to give God praise in the building for thinking enough of you to send somebody and give you somebody that can cause your life to be better than what it is. And I heard the writer say, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits shown unto me? I will offer unto the Lord the sacrifice of praise. It is the fruit of my lips. I wish I could hear somebody say, I got to pray. I got to praise and I got to get it out. 
I gotta get this praise out. And I just want to take about 30 seconds right here. And I heard him say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, but not just for me, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he done for you and all he's 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 done for you I know something about what he's done for you you don't have to shout I feel like I want to shout for you if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side you would have been utterly consumed but God made the devil out of a liar when the devil tried to come and take you out God reached down and pulled you up and somebody ought to give God praise for what he's able to do and guess what Monica the same God that did it for her is the same God that will do it for us I wish I could get somebody out there who's watching to get off the couch and give God a crazy praise I wish I could get somebody in this room to get up and give God a crazy praise Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Glory. Woo. Feel like running through troops? You can remain standing. We're getting ready to go. <laughs> In fact, we're going to dismiss like this. Now, if you want to get saved, meet me up front. If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, meet me up front. If you want to join the church, meet me up front. That's the altar call. <laughs> but I hear a song in my spirit. When I think of his good. And what he done for me when I think of his good and how he set me free I could dance 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 all night traveling grace be with you when I think of his goodness and what he's done for me when I think of his goodness and how he set me free I could dance 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 God bless you when I think of his goodness what he's done for me when I think of his goodness and how he set me free I get come on when I think of his goodness and what he's done for me when I think of his goodness and how he set me free I can dance 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 one more time when I of his goodness and what he's done for me when I think of his goodness and how he set me free I can dance, 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 dance all night all night all night all night all night all night dance 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 all night listen Listen, listen, two things, and y'all dismiss, but two things. These lights, these special lights, it was a company, they were either going out of business or whatever was going on, they're going out of business, and we had used them, and they said, I don't know what she's trying to tell me. They said, these lights are usually 3,500 but y'all can have them for 1200 So, cash app the church, whatever you use to help on that. I'm gonna give 100 on it. 11 other people do it. The lights are paid for. Now, I don't know what other 11 people gonna do it. Some of y'all have the financial wherewithal to do the whole thing. And you can do that too. That's the grace of giving. Now, I called my friend Al over at Al's Modern Clothing and Shoes. And I'm going I'm to give you a check to take to him. 
he closed at six and I told him to let you get whatever you want and the check will be in your hand wait wait because he just got to town y'all he just got to town and I, I text Al who owns his own clothing store now you, you won't even know what's on the check but Al will <laughs> but I want you to keep all the tags because I'm going to follow up with Al I know he's going to do the right thing though. No, he's probably watching right now and you get whatever you want You hear what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the grace of giving. Listen. <laughs> Ain't no such thing as a shortage of money. Just ask the federal government. <laughs> the stream of money is always flowing. wait on your testimony I said the stream of finance is always flowing you just got to get the stream flowing your way and one of the best ways to do that is to become a giver I know you know what I'm talking about when I think of his goodness and all he's done for me when I think of his goodness and how he set me free I can dance, 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 dance all night all night dance all night dance all night Dance all night, all night, dance all night, all night. a check pastor hobson's going to be up here to receive it for that if he wanted to write a check for it traveling grace be with you y'all y'all still here this far 